Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out a very easy C++ game engine. Literally, this is Easy Engine. Uh, it is open source, free, 3D game engine, uh, and yeah, I first checked this one out back in May of 2020. My goodness, how time flies. And today we are going to revisit it. So this is an open source project. It is currently, the binaries are in Windows, but there is a project underway to port it over to Linux, depending on what your platform of choice is. Now let's go ahead and take a look look at it. So you can see this is a simple scene loaded up in Easy Engine. And I'm just going to, here, we'll go ahead and run this game right now. Uh, and we can go ahead, just bang, go ahead. And you'll see I can shoot things in the world. And then eventually they will die. But I find eventually takes way too damn long. So I'm going to show you how all of this stuff works together. So we've got this simple level here. We have these NPCs in it. Each one of these is, in fact, a prefab. So you're going to go ahead. We'll show you in another example uh, that is a little bit more evolved that is using these same creatures. Uh, and it'll show the animations that are attached to them, etc. But the other thing you're going to notice here is we have game logic being set up here. So it's you can use C++ as your scripting language. You can basically extend whatever you want in this engine. In fact, the engine is entirely... Uh, uh, plugin base. So you see over here, plugins, all of these things, you can write your own. And one of the new additions, for example, is Angel Script. So if you want to add Angel Script scripting, you can do there, do it there. Procedural generation, do it there. Uh, and then I don't really want to add them right now, but you get an idea of how modular in nature this is. And you can create your own C++ extensions. I will show you how uh, Monster and Player are created in just a second. But here what you see, this has a player spawn point which is right here, it spawns the player in. And you'll see here, the player is pretty straightforward. It's a prefabbed asset. Uh, it's got a default player controller attached to it. It's got a camera attached to it. And then it's got that bullet we were looking at attached to. I'm gonna go ahead and open up that bullet prefab as an example. So we go into it like so. And what I'm going to do is let's make that bullet much more damaging. So now it does a thousand damage instead of 10 damage. So you can see how things all relate together. So this is created as a projectile class, which has properties attached to it. What we can do is go ahead and add in a variety of other effects in here or input handling and so on. So there are all the various different pieces that go together to create your world. So a typical component based approach. So our magic bullet is now attached to our player character and it is much more potent in its capability. So that is uh, how you set up properties within the world. The other thing you're gonna notice here is we have this level logic. And this is being done using a visual state machine. Uh, also, you have this uh, global blackboard, which is sort of like a global variables environment. So you've got things here like uh, hit points and money and so on. Those values can be used globally, uh, especially they can be used in things like this in our state machine. So let's go ahead and open up our state machine and you'll get an idea of how things work together. So here you see our initial start. We come in here, we set the value of add money over there, we count down a certain amount of time, and then we create a wave of monsters. That fires off the script class called Monster Wave. Again, we can go ahead and open this one up. And then you can see, again, this visual graph kind of approach to things. Again, keep in mind, you can also use Angel Script for this logic, and you can write things in C++ if you wish to do so. Now, this is how all things ultimately relate together. So let's go check out another example scene. I don't remember changing anything, but okay, let's go over here to level two. So here we got a typical world environment. So we've got this uh, player spawn is in place. So our player spawn point is right here. So we'll spawn in there and then the waves will fire in and they're trying to get to this chest over here. So we go ahead uh, and apply this. And then now we are in the world. I'll hit the G key to start the wave. Uh, and let's go find some guys to, to shoot at. So you get an idea. This is what the world environment is like and the way that things are controlled. Okay, no, they're coming this way. So let's go back over here. So they're all trying to get to my chest. So what I'm gonna do, I'll sit at my chest and I will nuke the hell out of them. Again, I have upgraded my, uh, my damage slightly, but eventually they'll get to the chest and I will lose. So that's the kind of how the games are set up and how things work. In terms of uh, instantiating things into the world, super simple. So again, everything is using this prefab approach. So coming up here, here are our props. So you can see these things that have this mark right there, those are prefabs. So if I want to drop a prefab barrel into the world, literally, it's that simple. If I want to go ahead and create something more or less from scratch, I can come up here, I can go ahead and say, file, create, and then I can create just about anything. So we got meshes and jolt physics things and physics properties and so on. But then I can come down here and say uh, scene, like so, and then I will call this Mike's scene create a new scene, and boom, there is how you create things in the world. So this default scene will have things like 
lighting at the top. And then we can add our geometry in. And by default, all we're going to have is this floor, uh, which is a gray box in shape that will, you know, be our floor to our world. I want to go ahead and add a new entity into the world. I go ahead and create a new child object like so. Again, everything is component driven. So I can go down here uh, and then, for example, one of the new things they added was this new random prefab module modifier right there. So we'll go ahead and create one of those. So our object now has that attached to it. So I think this is our object right here. And now what I'm going to do is come down here and apply some prefabs. So let's go ahead and pick an asset. So chests, sure, add another one. Uh, select the asset. We'll make this one orcs. Sure. So we have chests and orcs. Let's add one more. So you get an idea of how things all flow and barrels. All right. So they're all being spawned on the exact same spot. Uh, so this is another new feature they just added. So let's make 45 of them and let's add the range of where they can spawn. All right. 450 was a little much. Let's go back here. 45, 45. So there you see all around the world are random objects are being set up. And again, we can give them a random rotation value and so on. So this is how you create entities in the world. Again, all of these things are ultimately prefab. So we can go ahead and select that individual prefab. So our orc, for example, open that up, open that asset up. You can see how the uh, a character prefab is being assigned. And you see this guy is made out of quite a few different components. Again, that uh, blackboard, which can be used for your scripting logic. So here you can see we open that one up and you've got various different variables available. So react, hit, attack, melee, and so on. You're also gonna notice this is an animated character, so it has an animation controller of type monster attached to it. Let's go ahead and open that asset up, and there you're gonna see, once again, the animation controller. And this can use those blackboard variables for controlling other assets. Now, I did mention earlier on that you can actually script in a couple different languages. So here you can see C++ project. I could go ahead and set one up. We can open it in the IDE. We can also open up directly into Visual Studio Code, which is an integrated option as well. So here we are uh, with our second instance of Visual Studio Code here. And here you can see how, for example, so C++ source is set up. Here is how you could create a player component and a monster component. So a player component is right here. This guy has some exposed properties available. You can see it here in the world. So this is uh, how C++ code is set up for handling uh, a component that you can add into the to any property. So this is, again, called player. Here is one for a monster. And again, monster has properties of health and money reward. So you can see right there. So this is C++ code uh, that if you want to script your game logic this way, again, you can create components that way. And then we head on back over here uh, to say here, pick an entity in the world, or here, let's go ahead and create, create an empty. I can go ahead and add in, and you're gonna notice we have player. So monster attack player, and then we also have monster. So there you can see monster attack monster. So these are the two, uh, two uh, values oh, again. So you've got monster and player being exposed that way. So I could come back here. So again, let's just do that again. And that's add in monster. And remember monster. So if we head on back over here, monster has those two exposed properties, health and money reward. Those are now available, active health and money reward. So you can set those properties. So you can create your logic using C++ however you wish. And then you can expose it out to your level designers who just use these things just like components like you can see. Or of course, you can have it do it almost all using this visual scripting system or a lot of things that are built in out of the box. So again, you've got things here like navigation built in for controls. Um, you've got uh, hitboxes and so on. And then again, you have these this visual flow graph style of approach, which can be used, once again, if we come back here to our creatures demo scene right here, you can do entire level logic this way. So once again, we saw here, this is being done via state machine. Let's go ahead and open that up and then boom, you can control it this way as well. I don't know why there was an error, but there you can see, and you can set parameters that, that deal with it, various different script classes that are available over here. And again, any one of these can open up and it's this very straightforward visual programming language option as well. So there's a lot of different options here with Easy Engine. It does pretty much live up to its name. Uh, the other nice thing about it is it's, it's pretty well documented. So you got documentation, walks you through all the various different components and assets of it. As I mentioned, I first covered this like four years ago. So there's been some pretty continuous development going on with Easy Engine. Again, this is an open source project. It is under the MIT license. If you do like what you see here, come on in, give them a star. As I mentioned, 
newest release, uh, March 2025, was just a couple weeks ago. They are working on a Vulkan backend renderer and Linux, but right now this is primarily for the Windows folk. Uh, you see here again, a number of different releases available. The big thing about this newest release is they did add AngelScript as a scripting language. It's weird because there used to be TypeScript as well, and I don't know what ended up happening to that. You also got some uh, basic templates to get you up and going. Uh, C++ project generation can build standalone EXEs uh, and other options available here. So there's a number of different improvements in this update. Uh, again, another sample in there. Uh, we saw the random prefabs. I saw this in action earlier on. Shows you how you can go ahead and create those things. So there is a lot of features in here. Uh, they're, they're kind of a lot to love with this engine, to be honest. So that is the newest release of it. Again, first check this one out back in May of 2020. Obviously, we've had a number of improvements since then. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about it, it is available at easyengine.net. Uh, this is their homepage. It's a little underwhelming at times. The other nice thing here is there are a decent number of samples to get you up and going. Uh, some custom code and screenshots of what it is capable of as well. Uh, again, this is the testing chamber. Kind of gives you a, a, just a, an entry point to get figuring out how things work. But for the most part, it's actually a really simple engine to get up and going with. And again, a number of samples to get you up and going, which I always appreciate. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Easy Engine. Uh, again, right now, uh, this is a Windows only project uh, for the editor, but there is a port to Linux going on. Uh, again, I don't know the status of that. I do believe you will have to build from code yourself. But I think this is actually a pretty impressive project. And it, uh, it's quite, again, simple to work with. So again, if you want to uh, pull something from props, prefabs, literally, boom instantiate it in your world. And then you saw how these prefabs actually work, nest into them, really easy to work with in that regard. And then everything is component driven and you can easily create those components using uh, C++ if that is your weapon of choice. So ladies and gentlemen, easy engine, uh, an easy C++ game engine. Let me know what you think of this one. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.